Hey Nathan, it's Friday, September 26th. I really enjoyed your video from Wednesday. It was very jokes. Today's video is bacterial infections versus viral infections. What's the difference? Bacterial infections and viral infections can often have similar symptoms which can make it difficult for doctors to determine a treatment. It's important to know the cause of the disease or infection, obviously, because the medicine that we use to treat it is usually very case dependent. We're not talking magic here. We're talking science. Ooh, ah. So, bacteria. Prokaryotic, single-celled microorganisms. Prokaryotic meaning, unlike us eukaryotic organisms, their cells have no nuclei. A few micrometers long, they come in many different shapes like rods, spirals, and spears. Now with a particle of a virus, you're getting something that's 1 100th the size of an average bacterium with a diameter of 20 to 300 nanometers. They also come in many different shapes. Bacteria reproduce through a process of cell division called fission where everything inside the microorganism divides in two and then the bacterium itself splits in two. Viruses use a host cell for energy and material for their reproduction process in which they make copies of themselves through self-assembly. Both bacteria and viruses are found in every ecosystem of the world. While bacteria is known to be some of the first life on Earth, the origin of viruses is a little bit more of a mystery. They're thought to have maybe evolved from plasmids and bacteria. Even their status as a life form is questionable. While they reproduce, have genetic information, and are subject to natural selection, they don't have cells which many say are a requirement for life. So what happens when bacteria or viruses come in contact with humans? Well, some bacteria is good for humans. In fact, there are 10 times as many bacterial cells in the human body as there are human cells. There are over a thousand species of bacteria in the human intestines alone, which aid in digestion, immunity, fighting against bad bacteria, making vitamins. Basically, without bacteria living in us, we would die. We have a very symbiotic relationship with these bacteria. However, some bacteria is bad for us. Pathogenic bacteria can infect the body and cause diseases. Viruses too, when in contact with the human body, can cause disease. Let's look at the different diseases caused by bacterial infections versus viral infections. Infections by bacteria can lead to cholera, syphilis, anthrax, leprosy, bubonic plague, typhoid fever, tuberculosis, tetanus, diphtheria, foodborne illness, and salmonella. And these can be characterized by skin, eye, stomach, upper respiratory and ear infections, meningitis, shock, pneumonia, STDs, and urinary tract infections. Viruses that affect people include smallpox, rabies, HIV, HPV, norovirus, rotavirus, herpes, and hepatitis. And the diseases they cause contain Ebola, AIDS, bird flu, swine flu, SARS, influenza, the common cold, chickenpox, cold sores, cancers, shingle, polio, measles, mumps, and rubella. And of course, both bacterial and viral infections can cause death. That sucks. How do we get infected? Both kinds can get into the body in the same ways. Inhalation, ingestion of infected people's mucus or feces, sexual contact, exposure to infected blood, and the symptoms of the infections can be the same even though two very different pathogens could be infecting the body. The extreme differences between bacteria and viruses are the reason why it's so important for doctors to figure out which kind of infection it is. One treatment will not work for either type. To treat a bacterial infection, doctors will often prescribe antibiotics to kill or prevent further growth of the bacteria. Viruses are prevented or treated with vaccines and antiviral drugs. Thankfully, the field of medicine is constantly improving and doctors are able to better diagnose and differentiate between bacterial and viral infections. I hope you learned something today and Nathan will see you on Monday. Bye!